Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of Traces of War, a game designed by Tetsuya Nakamura from v v from VUCA Simulations. Uh, this is a very thin box, very dense. It is a really, re excuse me, it's related. It is rated 9 out of 10 on Solitaire Studibility and 4 out of 10 on Complexity. It's not, it's not a large game, it's a two-player game that simulates the intense fighting between Axis and Soviet forces in Ukraine. Dun, dun, dun. After the Battle of Kursk from August 1943 to March 1944, a major Soviet offensive is launched against a German mobile defense. Will the breakthrough be successful? Let's crack it open, see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. To subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, let's get started. So far, I've done unboxings of a few VUCA games, and their production quality has not not been a letdown. It's really raised the bar for other publishers who are hopefully paying attention. So let's dig into Traces of War. Start out, rule books right on top. And is A4 size, a little bit larger than US legal. It's, about, it's only about 16 pages though. And we'll get right into historical notes at the end. So um, see the rules go through, the main rules go through 12. There's some special rules on, on page 12 as well, the victory conditions and then optional rules on page 13 and historical notes on 14. So you see it's a little kind of a large print. It's glossy, glossy stock, so a little bit of reflection there. Um, but uh, not rules, not dense text, not wall O text. There's a lot of graphics in here. It's uh, medium font. A lot of, a lot of uh, examples of play, which are nice to explain the rules. That always helps. Combat. All right. A very succinct rule book. And then we've got, let's see what we got here. We have a unmounted map so we've got two, it looks like we're gonna have two unmounted maps on this one these are very nice quality kind of a linen-y uh, faux canvas finish not very not not regular paper more like a cloth um, one thing that is interesting is uh, they've got the uh, the cities like we've learned to now say Kiev instead of Kiev but they got imprinted in uh, the other language facing the other player. Not that you're going to probably play a player who is speaking that language, but it's kind of nice that they, uh, they put that in there as well. All right, so let's take a look at this map. You can see the whole thing here as I scroll it. Nice kind of an old worldy kind of effect. It's got some relief here that shows you the mountains, but they don't really you know, play into the game, I don't think. We'll see if there's a terrain chart for it, because obviously here you've got clearly defined uh, lowlands, marshes. But, so this is a, this is a eight panel, eight panel map, but it's very small. Let's go ahead and do a, just kind of a rough measure here. It's probably about 26, it's 26 by 20. So overall, you're going to end up being about 40 by 26. You've got your tracking, your reinforcement pools are down here. Uh, Axis command ship pools are down here. So the Axis is going to face this side. I assume the allies are going to face that way. That's plot map number two is probably a, predicting the, po po the pool stuff's going to be over there. Map two. So I don't get a I don't get a feel that they're gonna tear very easily, which is nice. So this one's gonna go like this compared to the other one. So then obviously the Russian Allied player is gonna have their controls over here, um, and then the uh, turn track is down here in the in the Axis control side. See it as off. So you're definitely gonna need some plexi though, because as, as nice as the paper gets, the, the creases get a little deeper, so you're gonna need something to press down on it um, to make play a little easier to do. So they usually do some really nice mounted maps, kind of 
kind of a minor letdown that this one didn't include Mountain Climbers. All right, two dice, six sided die. Oh, got a cock, so let's try that one again. Oh, black ones. So Germany won that round. Then we've got our, here's, a, here's the solitaire track sheet. Now this is a nice that they do this. This is included for those of you playing solitaire. You don't have to reach across the board to, uh, to track everything. So you've got the turn track here. You've got the Soviet command ship pull and the Axis command ship pull here, which one's active. And your reinforcement schedules are all stacked up here. So they do make it, they do make it nice for, for the solo player. Then we've got our counter sheets. These are pre-rounded. Three counter sheets. Trace of War Degree 1943, sheet one, front and back. The board, like I said, the board on most of theirs, the board seems kind of flimsy, but then when you punch the counters, the counters are perfectly good. Very nice, nice density, nice thickness. And, and the pre-rounding is a nice touch. I, I'm glad to see more and more companies are doing this. Then you don't need to spend time rounding them. All right, then we've got some markers here. Oh, these are your chits, 8th Army, 4th Panzer, 1st Panzer, 6th Army. 1st Ukraine, 1st Ukraine, so they get more action, Supreme Command orders. So there's Counter Sheet 1, Counter Sheet 2, and again more chits for chit pull. Chit pull makes any game solo, you can true solo both sides very easily. And then we got this, we got a few more markers and armies we got out of supply, Soviet control. Soviet control markers, they're not they're not flipped. So I guess Germany controls everything unless the Soviets take it. Uh, supply markers, more chip pulls, or more chits to pull. And then your game turn victory points. Etc. 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 Three counter sheets. Then we've got One thing VUCA does that's nice is they they really mount the uh, player aids are mounted on a chipboard, uh, just like you know tokens would counters would be, uh, even maps would be, and they're on nice solid uh, chipboard, and uh, not just cardstock. So this player sheet player aid sheet A shows the sequence of play, combat results table, and there's two copies of that if you're not playing solo. And then player aid sheet B, we also have two copies of. And that's got the supply rules, com combat rules, movement rules, some just rules, refreshers, reinforcements, supreme command order. Units in a major city under supreme command order change each R into a one step loss. So they have to retreat. If I've got that right. And then your unit key is here as well. All right, very cool. Very, very nice production. If you pick up a copy of Traces of War from VUCA Simulations, you are going to get two copies each of Player Aid Sheet B, mounted on nice chipboard. Player Aid Sheet A, two copies of that. You're going to get three sheets of counters and markers, all pre-rounded. You're going to get the one solo sideboard for uh, you know keeping everything in an organized play for one person. You're going to get two uh kind of linen-y mounted uh, excuse me not mounted linen -y paper maps that go together to form your 122 by 44 i think no 40 by 20 44 by 26 <laughs> map on your table which you'll need a piece of plexi to cover that and then a very very succinct let's see what was it 16 page rule book traces of war and two dice a black and a red and Germany won again. And that is everything that comes in Traces of War, Fuka Simulations, game designed by Tetsuya Nakamura. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!